was recently out at the World Youth Day in Lisbon. I was amazed by all the people I met who have seen videos all over the place. Singapore, Singapore. All my peeps in Singapore. <laughs> How's it going? And everywhere else. The title of this talk is Quantum Physics and the Particular Judgment. <laughs> That's just, you just, that deserves a clap right there. Particular judgment means your particular personal judgment at the moment of your death. Should that happen prior to Jesus' second coming and the end of the world, that there will be a moment when you die and you will be judged. A judgment in the sense of a revealing of reality. It's not like God just imposes something on you. It will make perfect sense to you. You won't be like, no, this is terrible. You're, you're desperate, God. You're so mean. But you'll just go, yep, that's actually what I deserve. It's just revealing the truth. And we don't always like the truth because it's awkward. And we don't like to be told that things we do are wrong because we want to do them. You know yourself. <laughs> that's an Irish saying. <laughs> actually, you know yourself. <laughs> you may not actually know yourself, nor you may not know what I'm talking about. But if you're Irish, you do. Okay, so there's this parable in chapter 13 of Matthew. So we're going to get to what this all means. Quantum physics and the particular judgment. Matthew 13, verse 24 and following. It's the parable of the weeds and the wheat, or the, the wheat and the darnel. Darnel is like a weed, but it looks like wheat when it, as it's growing. Yeah, so it's this really interesting story. There's this guy, he sows wheat in his field, and then his enemy comes at night and sows this darnel stuff, these weeds. How nasty is that? I mean, that enemy has little to be doing. It's like, I know, I'm going to spend all this money and buy these weeds. First of all, where do you buy weeds? I mean, that, in, uh, that alone shows amazing commitment, unless he went and picked the seeds of all the weeds from the previous year. I mean, seriously, lad, have you got nothing to be doing? But he must have really hated this fella uh, who he did this to, who would be God. Of course, this is just a great description of Satan. So his servants, who represent the angels, we hear later when Jesus explains this, his servants say, you know what, this is growing, there's weeds growing in here. What, didn't you sow good seed? And the, and the king says, oh, this is some enemy of mine. An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, no, lest in gathering the weeds, you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, gather the, the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. He later goes on and explains that this is about you know, the end of the world and the angels are the, the guys going out to do the harvesting and the weeds are those, the sons of perdition, the sons who are going to hell. And then the, the wheat are the sons of righteousness, something like that. But there's this interesting thing. He's describing that the world right now, and this is where we get into the quantum physics bit, Seriously, there is, there is a connection here. He says this thing, don't dig up the, the, the weeds now because you might dig up the wheat accidentally. So what does this describe? For me, this seems to be almost like a bit of a black box. There's a massive unknown here, and the unknown is souls. The unknown is how exactly will you and I end up? And we hear the Lord's reverence, the reverence before your freedom, that he puts up with sin, for the sake of salvation of souls, that at least some might be saved. He's willing to allow the sin and the mockery and the irreverence, the blasphemy to continue. The terrible sins committed against his goodness and his mercy in his heart, the desperate rejection, the, just the sin in the world, which is so scandalous to so many people, right? Why is there suffering in the world? Why would a good God let this happen? And here we have this, this answer from the Lord. Because if he tore up the darnel, there might actually be some, some of the, the, those weeds might yet become great saints. St. Francis spoke of this in warning us not to judge others. He said there are some now who are sons of hell, sons of perdition, who will become great saints. And there are some now who, who seem to be great saints, great followers of Jesus, who will become sons of perdition. We don't know, we cannot say, just because someone's lived sinfully their whole life, that that's, that's them, that's their identity, that they cannot change. It's like, no, by the grace of God, anybody can change. Anybody can come back. You, me, we can be converted. You, me, we could, we could be damned if we do not persevere in his grace. It's not that God is random. It's not that we, oh, we can't know. We don't know if he'll be merciful to me. It's like, no, we do. We do know if he'll be merciful to me if we accept his mercy, if we humble ourselves and ask him for his kindness, we, we, we repent of our sins. He will definitely be merciful to you. 
Uh, but the question is, where will we end up? And for those souls, maybe there's people in your life, you're like, there is no chance that boy. We have people stuck in boxes and we've decided your man is a hopeless cause and we've given up on people. We've given up on politicians, guys. Maybe that's a bit judgmental by me of you. Maybe you haven't given up on, on politicians. I struggle to not give up on politicians or on journalists. All the journalists watching, watching this, I'm sorry. I'm so judgmental of you, especially if you're Irish journalists. Even some of you are my friends. So many people and categories of people that I stick in categories in boxes and I lock you in there and I don't give you hope and I don't speak to you as I should that you too could become a great, great saint, that all of us are just a little whisper away from a total transformation of our hearts because God is real. And an encounter with his love changes people as it changed me from being a all over the place new ager to being a totally, totally sold out follower of Jesus. So why not? Okay, so the connection with the quantum mechanics at the heart of quantum mechanics is this, the dual nature, the particle wave nature of these quantum particles, they're actually also, they're, they're not they're particles, but they're also waves. And this is because they are, you can't know with certainty, both the location of a quantum particle and its momentum. So if you find out its location, you lose the capacity to know its momentum. And if you find out its momentum, you lose its, your capacity to find out its location. So it's like this weird thing that's totally different from reality as we know it. Very, very strange, actually impossible stuff to understand. It's totally counterintuitive. So then you have these quantum particles and it's literally a black box. Like you can't know it. It's Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. He talked about the fact like if you had a cat in a box and in the box was also poison and you didn't know if the cat was dead or if it was alive, if it had eaten the poison or if it hadn't eaten the poison, if it had eaten the poison, it was on the way to death. So that he kind of said, well, therefore you could almost say that the cat is potentially both alive and dead at the same time. It's like in this dual state. So he used this as an example, Heisenberg, to kind of say how we don't actually know the state or the location and the momentum of a quantum particle. And here's the strange thing, that it's actually in all of the states to a certain extent at the same time. This is actually a thing, guys. This isn't just, oh, I'm not sure exactly where the thing is, but once I know, I know. It's like, no, that there's a way in which it's actually in all of the places. That's why they talk about it being a wave, because there's a wave you can, as a, as a measure of the probability that it is in certain locations. Once you find out where it is, once of you, you observe the quantum state, I think they call it, the whole thing collapses down to normal physics, normal Newtonian physics, and the wave sort of disappears with observation, which is another really weird thing. You suddenly know where the thing is, and uh, and then you don't even no idea the momentum, apparently. I don't know why that is, but apparently you don't. And so too with us, that we're not just, oh, you're either saved or you're going to hell. It's like, no, we're actually in this place of profound potential. We could be partially going, you know, I'm following God and I'm not following God. Now, there is a way in which, yes, there is, there is a clarity in the heart of like, okay, am I, am I in or am I out? And not just, oh, I'm attracted to God and I pray every now and again, but in a given moment, okay, what am I choosing? Am I choosing to follow him? Am I choosing to, to live for myself? Am I being selfish? Am I not being selfish? There's lots of different ways you could draw that line. Am I surrendered to the Lord Jesus or am I not? But there's also this way in which our Lord speaks of in this parable of where we're, we're kind of in this mysterious space, uh, this undecided space. And the Lord does not judge us until the moment of judgment. He has great reverence for us as we grow and as we make these choices, as we flip sometimes daily, multiple times a day between being wheat and being darnel. <laughs> so much so it could almost be like we're in the same state at the same time, two states at the same time, but we're not. And the question is when the music stops, brothers and sisters, which will you be? Which do you want to be right now? Which do you want to be? Anyway, loads of thoughts and ideas in there. <clears throat> Good luck editing team. <laughs> I'll be praying for you. <laughs> oh dear.